Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maureen Williams, and I'm the Director of Care Navigation for Four Seasons, The Care You Trust. And I'm happy to be your host again for the second in our three-part series of Harnessing Tech to Connect, a wonderful collaborative series in honor of Family Caregiver Month. Last week, we had a wonderful first session called You Are Not Alone. We had a fabulous panel with some wonderful suggestions, very practical tools, and you can still view that on the Land of Sky Facebook page or on the AARP um, YouTube channel as well. So we're very excited that you've joined us again this week. We have a wonderful program planned for you today. And two of our presenters have joined us again today to share a good uh, more with you about the social bridging program offered through the, um, UNC Asheville. And so as Miranda and Victoria get queued up here again, I want to offer an introduction of these lovely, lovely ladies who are about to graduate. Congratulations, ladies. Miranda Poe is a uh, student with UNC Asheville. She's about to graduate with a degree in health and wellness promotion with a minor in Spanish. Congratulations, Miranda. And Victoria is also a, a UNCA student who's about to graduate with a degree in psychology this semester. So ladies, we're both very proud of you for your accomplishments that way, but in particular for what you're going to share with us right now of how to help seniors connect in the community. So ladies, please share with us more about this social bridging project. I love to hear about it. Thank you, Maureen. Um, I'm happy to be here again. Um, so this project really came about during during this COVID restrictions this year, where we know a lot of, especially older members of our community are really isolated. Um, and so the purpose of this project is for volunteers like myself and Victoria to call individuals that have been referred or that have referred themselves. And that can look like just social calls, just checking in, seeing how they're doing. And sometimes we connect people to resources they need, whether that's help with uh, setting up internet or help learning how to text or FaceTime um, or help with garbage pickup, things like that. Just connecting people to the resources they need right now. And we're not um, licensed counselors or medical professionals, but we can help you connect to the resources that you need, like if you need help connecting to a virtual um, doctor's appointment, um, we can help you connect to that. And we um, do a lot with help with technology, which to connect to your friends and families during this time is important. So helping with technology is a big part of it. <laughs> I can imagine. So how would someone um, participate in this program? How, how would someone get referred to participate, ladies? So um, I think if Rebecca could pull up the flyer again, yes. the, um, the number to, to refer someone or if you'd like to be connected to someone to talk to is 828-711-3445. Or you can also send an email to socialbridge at unca.edu. Miranda, if I could, real quickly, th there we go. Is it 771 or 711, as you stated? We want to make sure we're giving out the correct phone number. Sorry, 771. I'm sorry. That, that's okay. So uh, this is in the chat for those of you who are viewing. So, so if someone wanted to be... Uh, a, a senior or someone who could use some help with connecting with doctor's appointments, Victoria, they could contact this number. You all could help them. Great. And suppose um, you all would like to have volunteers, more volunteers join this program. How do people connect there? I believe the same number no, would, yeah. uh, yeah. would be the best place. And um, I think we're always it's looking for program. volunteers. Yeah, yeah, because it's, you know, it's free to the community, mm -hmm. which is a really great resource. So, yeah. Oh, I think it's a fabulous resource. And and do you all have any interesting um, stories for this week from, from our last time we were together? Anything that caught your attention, like helping somebody um, deal with voting or, or, or whatever the situation was? 
Um, I had a long conversation about about the election last week with with the, one of my participants who I call every week. Um, so that was that was good. Um, it's a lot to talk about, obviously. Um, yeah, not, I don't think I have too much too much to report. Just our our usual call. It's um, it's interesting to talk to someone I've never met in, in person. She always shares a little more with me every call. She go you know a little more personal details. So it's it's very nice. Yeah, that's precious. Thanks, Miranda. Victoria, did you have anything to add to that? Um, so I have helped um, several people with technology. Um, one person I helped, um, I helped her send an email and check her email because she needed that for doctor's appointments. Um, and then I've also helped another client, even though they had a different phone than I did, um, like iPhone versus Samsung, um, I helped her send a text and set up Google Duo so that she can, um, call her family in California. So, yeah. That's fabulous. So for those of you who are watching, Miranda and Victoria have really become technology ambassadors <laughs> in the social bridging program. So please consider this for anyone that you might know or yourself and contact that uh, the social bridging project at the phone number listed 828-771-3445 or socialbridge at unca.edu. And Miranda, Victoria, we thank you so much. We really appreciate y'all sharing with us. We'll see you again. Thank you. thank you, ladies. All righty. Well, now we're going to transition into the bulk of our, our part two in this three-part series. And this session is, is entitled Technology for Home Safety. And our speaker for this session is Bob Krollman. Bob has been in assistive technology for many, many years, and he provides assistive technology consults for aging in place safely. Bob is a wealth of information and experience. And so Bob, we're glad that you're here with us and thank you for sharing with us. We are really looking forward to what you're gonna sh share. Lots of neat things, everybody. Don't click away. Take it away, Bob. All right, can people hear me? Somebody, I because we've been having volume problems today. Um, what you see in front of us, I'm going to use a PowerPoint presentation to uh, kind of keep me on track. Uh, and this is a disclaimer: all the images that we're using or anything that we talk about are just examples. There's no uh, endorsement on my part of any of these product services. Um, and if you get sent to an external site, uh, it's really up to them to answer the questions regarding the, the veracity of their content. All right, so the information disclaimer is done. So I have somebody, yes, there she goes. All right, that's, this is what we're calling this. Um, if this is where you're supposed to be, then welcome. Next slide. We're really talking about assistive technology, but we're talking about enabling technology. Promotes and enables independence, safety, and peace of mind, which is important. Monitors and supports routine activities of daily living, health, safety. Click. It should be unobtrusive and intuitive as best as is possible. Promotes social engagement. And health and monitoring. So, all right, et cetera. Next slide. How I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna throw up some general slides that talk about uh, access and safety. So the first slide is uh, refers to home lighting which is a a big issue as as one gets older uh it's more difficult to see things in low light which creates problems with tripping falling slipping so these are examples of the kind of technology that's readily and cheaply available uh that can be retrofitted in your home um there are wall coverings, outlet plugs that have little 
uh, LED lights at the bottom that come on automatically when it's, the hallway is dark or wherever you have it. It's just to serve as kind of a safety guide and orientation if you're in that, that space in the middle of the night. Uh, below that, the six objects are small plug-in uh, night lights that are uh, a bit brighter, and they can just go in a wall outlet wherever you might need light that comes on um, to guide people safely. Uh, there are stick-on lights that um, operate motion sensor. You can have a switch there, probably 20 bucks. They can go in a closet or, uh, you know, somewhere where you might need a little light occasion, but you don't want, you don't want it to be on all the time. Um, very high output LED lights that um, device in the center with the three panels is very energy efficient and very, very bright. I uh, use that crawl spaces, attics, garages, uh, both indoor and outdoor versions are, exist. You can see down at the bottom, there's lights that are solar power that go along stairs, external stairways, which you have to kind of remember uh, if you got to get in the house, sometimes uh, if it's dark, it creates a, a real hazard. Uh, all these things are very inexpensive and readily available. Um, you just have to search under uh, home lighting, wireless home lighting on the Internet, and you have plenty of options, or um, I can help if you want to contact me. Next. These are some more um, access home safety things. Uh, there's a little device in the upper left-hand corner that allows you to clip a key onto a small light so you can find a, uh, you can access the key in your front door if that's a problem. Uh, there are fluorescent uh, stair treads that are safe, uh, different kinds of tapes that you can uh, put that offer contrast on interior and exterior stair treads and also you can get those kinds of tapes in a fluorescent uh, configuration also. Uh, the light in the center with the, the little dots on the face of it is a solar powered uh, lamp that uh, is motion sensitive and can be used inside or outside. And then just general home access and safety, I'm a real believer in trying to contain uh, throw rugs in a house, um, front, front mats in front of the, the doorway when you come in, and then along hallways often slip and fall, and that's a problem. It's a real safety hazard. Wherever possible, throw rugs should be eliminated, but if not, there are... Uh, a lot of different ways to attach it to the floor that are not, that don't involve a hammer and nails. So that's the most effective. Next. These are just a, a, a couple things about uh, door access. Uh, there are, as I'm sure people are aware, any number of options to have door pits that are electronic, door pads that are controlled from your phone so that if you uh, have one of these installed, you have to let somebody in. Uh, it's real, uh, you just hit a button on your application and the door opens. You also can put in uh, multiple access codes. If you have uh, a home health worker that's coming in or uh, someone delivering uh, services or goods, uh, you, they can have their own se separate code that allows them access. It's easily changeable. Um, the, the two things in the middle, the anti-theft detector alarm and that door stop, are really devices that you can use to uh, let you know when a door is being opened uh, in different places. It's a little magnetic sensor, and you can uh, just, just stick that up on the door frame, and it's a pretty loud alarm. Uh, 
kind of useful if you have people that are wandering uh, and you want to know if the front door, the, one of the doors, exit doors gets accessed and opened. The doorstop on the bottom is the same kind of thing. Um, when the, it's wedged underneath the door and when the, the silver part, the white part, uh, gets triggered, it sets off a loud alarm. It was originally designed for people that travel into hotels, uh, uh, but there is use on a temporary basis to uh, keep the perimeter secured in your house if you have people where that's an issue. Next slide. These are just um, the smoke carbon monoxide uh, alarms that uh, can they a lot of them you can get to talk to you very specifically in a voice that someone will recognize they tend to if they're asleep they tend to awaken uh, faster if it's a familiar voice rather than just a, a beeping and a buzzing um, they also a lot of them have lights that come on to help guide you to an exit if they if they are triggered and the device on the the right is a bed shaker or pillow shaker. It goes under your uh, pillow, and it, if it senses an alarm being triggered, it will vibrate also to help uh, get somebody up who's sleeping. Next. Um, this is just, I just want to say that ring the ring system the ring doorbell system and other security systems have all kinds of attachments and peripheral programs that control lighting uh, that can control locks that can ensure safety uh, people can observe their perimeter other folks caregivers who aren't in the room can also access a camera via their phone uh, there's just a number of possibilities uh, best buy is a good resource for this they have a whole section that, that looks at smart home technology and um, a lot of this stuff is pretty simple to do um, you know find a 12 year old somewhere that can help you install that that'd be great next slide this is a device made by Clarity that was originally developed for uh, folks with hearing impairment. But like so many things, you can use uh, technology that's designed for one uh, population and, and use it in different ways. This is a, a little unit on the right that has sensors that, that if the phone rings, it lights up. Uh, same thing with uh, if there's a door alarm triggered, like you can put a, a, a sensors by your front door. Um, it will tell you when they, if that door's been open. It can alert you if there's a sound in the room and you're not paying attention, or if there's somebody comes into a room. So um, this can go on a, a table somewhere uh, if. You have the, the main device in uh, your caregiver. You put the main device in the in the room where your uh, care recipient is. You can have that little box on the left is just another station that uh, allows the you know if something's triggered it tells you. So if you're in the kitchen or somewhere and you're out of hearing range, it can support the same functions, but in a different place. And the little tiny device, you can barely see at the top center, is actually a uh, thing that you wear, like a pager, and it will vibrate and will indicate which of the six functions have been triggered. Uh, that's an inexpensive, um, it's an inexpensive way to, uh, let caregivers be a little more mobile within the house. Next slide. This is kitchen safety, and, and 
the two most dangerous places in the home are the kitchen and the bathroom. So there's some general things that really some of them are just my general um, no-nos, prohibitions. Um, a couple have to do with microwaves. One is you should never use a microwave over the top of the stove. That would involve uh, reaching over the stove where there's um, the possibility of catching clothing on fire and burns. And also as you take uh, things that are heated out of the microwave, it's above your your head and you may, you may drop it and spill it and create more hazards, health hazards and risks. On the left is a microwave that's available that you can program as a caregiver if you're going out, you can actually have a button that says, you know, lunch, and it can, a person can put the, the um, dish in and just push one button and it cooks it automatically. Um, but there's a number of functions that you can do with it, and it's a, it's a good solid alternative to promoting some level of independence with meal prep. Next slide. These are not really technology, but they're gadgets that uh, can keep people safe from spilling or cutting themselves. Upper left, half, upper left hand corner is a, it's a cutting board that has a little vise to hold things. It has three nails on the left hand side of it. You can like plop a potato on top of that and just peel it with one hand. Uh, they're pretty useful. You can contain a piece of bread uh, and spread condiments or peanut butter or something. I won't shift around. Um, lower left-hand corner are uh, mixing bowls. And there are any number of, of items like this that have non-skid rubber on the bottom. You also can put uh, a non-skid mat or crumple up a dish towel. A wet dish towel will keep it, the things from spinning. Um, the middle thing is a pizza cutter, but it's a large grip and it, it's easy to handle and it can be used to um, cut lunch meats and sandwiches um, and help in food preparation. And it's a pretty safe way to do it. The thing on the left is um, a device to open uh, bags. A lot of times people have a bag of frozen vegetables and they kind of stick a knife in it and it's a little wobbly and they can cut themselves. So this is a $2 item that you just kind of squeeze it over the top of the bag and slide it along and it opens it up like a Ziploc bag. Next. Okay, now we're getting into, into stove, stove safety. Um, a lot of times people, you know, there's a fire hazard if they leave uh, something on the stove and it's unattended, the stove, the stove guard, the safety device at the top is actually something you hook into. A, they have both electric and gas models. And if it doesn't detect motion in front of the, um, in front of the stove, after a set amount of time, it'll shut off. Uh, the stove, so you don't you, you reduce the risk of burning uh, food or yourself or creating a fire hazard. Um, lower left hand corner is just a plug in device that's used with uh, the the glass top uh, stoves. The I, I guess they're infrared burners or contact burners. In the left hand corner or the right hand corner is something called a safety burner. And that's a retrofit on an electric stove, they have them for gas stoves, but you plug that in and it there's no glowing coil that you can catch your clothes on. It doesn't go above 400 degrees and won't ignite things quickly, so, or if at all. So that's actually something that you can use if, if someone's, you know, potential for them to hurt themselves, uh, with a with a real bright burner, you can take and install those things. They're 
they're less expensive than a uh, new stove. Next slide. Uh, this is something that, it, that you can unobtrusively install. Um, they're, they're little can, canisters of uh, fire retardant powder and they go in the stove hood. They can either be permanently uh, permanently installed in the in the range hood. That's the upper example. And the below are the ones that are like tuna cans. You just position them in their little magnets and it holds them down. This is a very effective device to contain uh, grease flare-ups and kitchen fires. And I can tell you, Gibbons, uh, their, their assisted living facility has these devices in every unit. Um, because it not only does it stop the the fire, but it, it, you have to get these things replaced, and it lets people know care caregivers that uh, there was a problem that was addressed and maybe needs to be looked in a little more and trying to keep keep people safe. Next slide. This is another thing. Just quickly. Um, the control knob position in the kitchen uh, stove should be in the front wherever possible. It keeps people from reaching across the stove top to turn things on or off or to um, access the larger control panel for the oven. Next slide. And move on to bathroom safety with kind of a nod to uh, general safety. Yeah, Marie? Hey Bob, yes, we've got some questions coming in, Bob. Okay. If, if we could take, if you could take a few questions, that would be great. Okay. Um, we, we, so many homes built in the last fifteen to twenty years um, have the microwaves put above the stove. Um, I mean, you know, for for if I'm living at home alone and I want to look at this for safety, who do I who do I call to help me with this situation? Or you know, what suggestions do you have? Um, what I've done and. and when my mother was alive, I, she was my big lab rat for a lot of this stuff. Um, all above the stove microwaves, there's a cabinet above, usually that the vent goes through, that's also uh, a plug, an outlet. And the stoves are, you just have to unplug that and it renders that unusable. And then I, you know, spend a hundred dollars and find a, a counter unit that can help them heat food up. They don't need elaborate, expensive units to uh, cook with, but rather just a, a lot of reheating. And that's more than adequate for that. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Bob. And then um, some of those lighting options were so, oh, here's one. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. The door access items, uh, there were so many fabulous safety things, particularly if I'm taking care of someone who has dementia. You know, what if I'm searching on the internet for these items, what do I search for? What sh what are some of the things I should type in? Well, certainly uh, remote interior door access. Um, we also could could type in my email address and contact me, and I'd be happy to to kind of talk that through because it's a lot of times it's just general responses in a training like this where really specific things we don't. There's a a tendency on people's part and professionals and, and other folks to over tech a solution, to make things unbelievably complicated. Uh, and you don't have to, like with my mom's microwave, I just unplugged it above the stove. She can't get up there. I told her it was broken and she used it for the last two years. She lived alone as a bread drawer. She kept her breads mm -hmm. and things in there and it was fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, but it it's, just, it's, that's my address on the bottom. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's going to get, his email's going to get typed in everybody. Okay, so for the door access, just remote interior door access, that would be a good place to start searching. And the, for things about the lighting and the reflective tapes, if I didn't, there's Bob's email, everyone, tico13 at aol.com. Um, if people didn't want to go out and search for those sorts of things on the internet, are, are, do local hardware stores carry those sorts of things, like for the lighting or the reflective tapes, or, or some of the big box stores? Is that some an of option, those Bob? Device, absolutely. Um, 
you know, I'm a believer if you can find it locally to do so, but there are a lot more options uh, in a in a in a just short time by going on the internet and kind of tooling around, and also given how we're kind of shit, we're changing our shopping paradigms. Um, you know, this stuff can show up the next day, so you don't have to drag yourself into a store. Um, but I do, I do love finding lighting things. So please call me, and I can direct you. I mean, my house is a big lab, and you know, stuff <laughs> comes in, and I'm kind of on restriction right now that I shouldn't bring any more stuff in. But you know, it's almost the holidays. Make nice yeah. stocking yeah. stuffers. Which that's right. just a point I want to make too. That um, you know, rather than buy an elder. Uh, a tie or a box of thank you notes, you could get a small piece of technology that might make their life a lot easier. It may not be much, but it may be just enough to keep them safe and independent for a longer period of time. Love it. Thank you, Bob. So Rebecca, if you'll pop his email back up and we'll get back to the pre. Okay. These are, um, I mean, and it burns again is a big issue uh, in the kitchen. It's also scalding burns that uh, can happen in the kitchen and the, the, the bath. And there are three different types of, of valves. Um, the two on the bottom uh, actually are put installed by a plumber the the one in the top, you can actually get devices like that that screw onto an existing, uh, say, bathroom faucet. Um, the balancing with water temperature is uh, you can set the water temperature down in the uh, the hot water tank. Uh, they, they have adjustments for that. You can keep it at 115, 120 degrees. If that's if that happens, you have to make sure that people can uh, safely clean and rinse their dishes. Um, at the same time, um, it is kind of a no cost, effective way to reduce that risk. You also, what most dishwashers now have heating elements so that they bring the water temperature up inside the dishwasher to 135 degrees minimum, which is what's needed to sanitize. Next slide. This is something I don't think too many people are, are going to incorporate into their homes right now, but I just thought this was kind of cool. This is a device by Kohler that if you want to turn your shower on in the morning, you can just call it up on your phone rather than walk the 10 feet to turn the tap on. But it, it gives you uh, control of the temperature in a, a very exacting way. And, and more and more as technology advances, uh, you're going to see more and more of these things. I saw something on TV the other night. It was uh, a kitchen faucet controlled by Alexa, uh, which you know, that, that's kind of the wave of the future. But this is, you know, there are ways to uh, keep the water temperature. I think this device also uh, has a stop at a certain temperature, so you can't go above that, which might be what well, might get attractive, but it's probably four or $5,000, which, you know, I'm not sure that's worth the money right now. It's cool, but whatever. Next slide. Um, slip, uh, slipping and falling are another one. There, there are two sites on the bottom uh, that I found that just give the best reviews for non-slip bath mats and for shower mats. And you can see that, that you know, the shower mat kind of goes in the bottom as a hole for the drain. The non-slip bathroom mats, you want to make sure that you have non-slip bath mats inside and outside the, the bathtub because you can slip in the tub, you can slip as you get out. Next slide. Um, grab bars um, and lighting again, I'll talk about this. Um, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, the woman getting out, there's a, 
uh, device is about $60. It clamps onto the tub and just serves as a, a support uh, they, that they can use to steady themselves that they get out of the tub. It also is something that's removable. There's no holes drilled or it's just a portable thing. If they travel somewhere, they can throw it in their suitcase, take it with them. Um, the center top is a transfer seat that you get in and you kind of slide the whole chair over into the tub and you can bathe. Uh, you can bathe that way. Uh, the lower left are just different kinds of lighting in the in the bathroom because that's something that as you get older it appears that you access the bathroom a lot more in the dark than you did when you were younger um, the 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 bars the the pole that can be used in the bath it can be set up in the to help transfers out of beds or out of uh, you know, an easy chair recliner, and it allows their, the handles are kind of portable or movable, so they can help uh, a patient or a, a person do a standing pivot, uh, which is important if they're going to transfer into a wheelchair or um, I guess that's it. And then the other the other device at the bottom is a bar that goes into the wall. It's usually, you find that for toilets. Uh, commodes and it it actually folds up when not in use and can drop down so you can have uh, these bars on either side of the toilet and, and somebody that doesn't have the quadricep strength to get up can get an assist that way next slide this is these are some devices for people that are caretaking for someone that may wander um, the anti-theft detector alarm, again, just goes in the door. Uh, the clarity alarm in the center, we talked about that. The left-hand side is, uh, or the right-hand side of the bottom is, uh, you know, the same type of device. Probably get that at Ace Hardware or get online that just lets somebody and sets an alarm off when somebody opens the door. Uh, there's a mat you can plug in. Uh, a sensor that'll send a signal or a sound when someone steps on it. And then in the center of the top, um, it's a three-dimensional rug that because it looks like there's a hole, people, it will give people pause and they may not uh, be willing to cross over that because of the illusion they might fall. So that's a real uh primordial kind of response, but that's a, you know, a $60 item that, you know, it, it may make a difference. Uh, next slide. That kind of moves us to wearable technology, the different kinds of things that you can uh, give to someone or uh, attach to someone's clothing that allows you to make sure that they're safe if they uh, if they're out and they fall or they're they go to the park and they don't come home on time you can actually locate uh, devices like that that's uh, and and they're they're different they're, there's all kinds of different devices and this is this is something that probably one should consider uh, using the internet to search for uh, the blue thing in the upper section is a pendant that has the same function, pretty unobtrusive. Uh, there is a uh, smart sole you can insure, insert into a uh, shoe uh, so that it's unobtrusive. And uh, sometimes people take off these, uh, these tracking devices, and that creates uh, a problem because uh, if you're – Counting on the technology to keep someone in a safe area and it's on the kitchen table, it's not, and the person isn't at the kitchen table, it doesn't do a lot of good. The dog tab tag in the uh, right is kind of a, a next generation uh, dog tag. Uh, it has a person's history, contact information. If someone 
finds that they can, uh, authorities can download information on where they should be in emergency contacts. Next slide. This is this is an area that's just exploding. I wearable technology and things that are connected to your smartphone. It seems like every time I log on, there's something else. Uh, the wearable technology. I'm sure a lot of folks have seen the advertisements for Cardio, which is a hospital medical grade EKG that you can do from your phone. Um, Amazon's gone for eighty nine dollars. Now they're highly reliable, and it, if you're if you have a history of, of some heart issues, it can help you uh, get information to your your cardiologist, your doctor, in a very timely fashion. Um, a lot of these watches, these wearable devices, they they have monitoring of uh, you know location. Uh, and the pendant down below and the bottom is that's just a, a nicer, uh, it looks like jewelry. Um, but these devices have uh, GPS chips in them. They have anti shedding devices, which if someone takes off a device or it falls off, it, an alarm goes out immediately. Um, Next slide. Huh. Um, can you back up just so I got that slide up? I don't know whether. Yeah, um, I just want to say a little something about uh, smartwatches that with each iteration of the smartwatch, the previous one gets less expensive, but more and more, um, more and more things uh, are available on uh, on these watches. The the newest version, of the Apple Watch, has um, has different things on it. It has uh, a third generation technology for heart sensors that automatically send them alarms if um, you know there's a problem there's a lot of feedback uh, haptic feedback on these things things will buzz and shake when you're supposed to pay attention to them it does it has um, blood oxygen sensor which I think especially now with uh, the pandemic, you know, that's a an area that people look at right away is is your blood ox, oxygen level. So that that sends information for that. It's connectivity on uh, GPS on uh, cellular models. Uh, they have compasses. They have altimeters. Um, just all kinds of stuff. It's like the Batman utility belt or wristwatch. So there's a lot of stuff available. And when a new model comes out, all of a sudden there's all kinds of availability of less expensive, uh, less expensive models. So that just involves kind of searching around, and you can find stuff, and you can you can find sites that'll compare and contrast the different features and give you a sense of who likes what and what might be worth an investment. Next slide. This is just to to remind people that um, the smart home movement has created uh, opportunities to for greater independence and then for monitoring people and helping them engage um, their world from safety to cooking to entertainment to social engagement. And um, it just depends on the the device and the the platform that it operates on. I I was my aunt is 80 years old and called her the other day and the music was loud and she just started talking to Alexa to turn the music down and it kind of surprised me because she didn't strike me as someone that would 
be an adopter of this type of technology, but it, it seamlessly went into our life. And there are other things that uh, you can do. Uh, technology, the thermostats are one of the first things in the doorbells, but you can actually use um, any kind of smart thermostat, Nest or Honeywell it makes very easy ones that you can access online. So that if you're somewhere and uh, you're not not at, at home with the with the care recipient, and they're it claims that I'm cold, you can actually go on your phone or um, your iPad and uh, change the temperature, and it allows you to monitor usage. Um, plugs uh, certainly connected to or ones that are connected to uh, different platforms, or just are freestanding. I I get plugs that. They, they go in, you can put a, uh, you know, you can plug in a coffee maker and you can control that from your phone or there are actually uh, plugs that are smart enough to uh, send out a notice when they're being used so that if you have someone that lives independently, but you want to make sure they get up uh, and they're up and moving during the day, um, and you know that they like coffee first thing in the morning, you can actually plug a module, plug the, the coffee maker into a module, and it will actually send you a text or an email uh, when uh, the device is used. So it's an inexpensive, unobtrusive uh, kind of safety check. Uh, but there's just all kinds of technology, and it really depends on talking through the situation. Uh, to find the right device that will give you the peace of mind and will let folks be as independent and as safe as possible. Next slide. Or not. Okay, so there was Alexa. Google Home is much, you know, that's another thing to consider. Again, all these devices are available uh, pretty readily. Uh, next slide. Uh, Google Home, Alexa, they're, they're freestanding, um, and you can get different kinds of security with, with Ring. They have all kinds of different levels of, uh, of, of security, and you can go. They have pretty easy online uh, applications, if you would, that will help you define what it is you need and how much it might cost. And you might find that you don't need a lot of stuff and you probably can go down to the hardware store and get a couple of things that would do as much as some of these systems. Next slide. Simply Safe is another one of these services like um, ADT uh, that you, you actually buy you buy the devices from them and they install them and then there's a monitoring fee and you can have different levels of monitoring uh, your home security and your other um, access. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it's peace of mind for a lot of people that are connected to, uh, you know, from the care recipient to the caregiver to family members. Uh, it allows people to stay in touch and kind of monitor stuff in an in non-intrusive way. Next slide. Um, ADT uh, also has um, fall detection, uh, GPS location. It kind of a, you know it's a system that kind of holds um, all the important things in one place. Um, Again, fall detection. I mean, that's another thing with pendants and, and the current watches. They have accelerometers on them that will actually uh, indicate when someone's fallen. And the Apple Watch actually has a little sequence it runs through that lets you, you know, you can respond that you're okay. Or if not, then it can alert someone to come uh, offer assistance. Next slide. Okay, so this is 
These are just some of the places that you can uh, look at this stuff, their displays. They do combine some uh, consultation. A gig Squad will will do a lot of this stuff for you for uh, you know some a reasonable amount of money that can install uh, devices you've picked out stuff on the internet you can find all kinds of, of folks the garage door security is just something that's a personal concern of mine i never had an electric garage door before i moved to Asheville, and i was all worried i was going to leave it open and you can actually get it so it can either tell you it's open or it can close it automatically at a certain point in time like every night at nine o'clock it can get sh shut it down and then window and door sensor entry bell is another company that like uh, ring that provides other services so that's that i'm probably at about 10 minutes left for questions if people are so inclined if not um certainly can um we can contact me whatever uh i'm inherently lonely COVID, so <laughs> please feel free to, to brainstorm stuff with me. Thank you, Bob. We have one really great question. And uh, um, and just for everyone who's watching, Bob is an assistive technologist. Yeah, he'll put his uh, email up later. But the question, Bob, you can see there is about bed alarms, where to get silent bed alarms. Can you moderate them on the phone? And what about with multiple caregivers? What are your thoughts about that? Um, well, I, I think you could chain together, uh, you know, a sensor pad next to the bed and then how it reports that information. I'd have to look into that. I'm happy to do that. Um, but I think there's probably a way, it seems like a easily solvable, uh, issue. Uh, it just depends on the situation, what would work best. Sounds good. Sounds great. Cause I, and I can envision where that would be a real need. Um, Bob, that optical illusion rug was awesome. If I, if you were to search for that, what, what would you type in, in a search or where do you find I such think, a I think optical, well, they all come to my, they all come because so somebody listens to my phone and they, they just send me all kinds of stuff, but I think just, you know, optical illusion rug, I would probably start searching under that. Um, it's really wild when you think about it. I mean, I'd, I'd like to have one, but it probably would confuse me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Well, Bob, thank you so much for this. And if we have more questions come along, we'll pull you back in. But thank you so much. And for those of you who are watching live or later, uh, you know, that we put up, there's Bob's email. And he's more than happy to answer questions that you might have. And as you can tell, he's he's done this for a long time and is quite expert. So thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to ask Ruth Price to join us just now. And there's Ruth. She's with the Land of Sky Area Agency on Aging and the Caregiver Program. And she's going to share some items with us. Ruth? Well, one thing I wanted to let everybody know that uh, we do have a survey that we would like you to take to give us some feedback about the presentation. We'll be looking over those for about the next two weeks. And for those of you who do take that survey, you might just get a door prize. And those door prizes include a digital thermometer, a talking thermometer, which with COVID can be really important, uh, gets you a quick read on a, a temperature. Uh, also robotic animals and I think uh, Rebecca is going to put a link to a little video. If you're not familiar with robotic animals, we've got a cat and a dog that will be uh, used for door prizes and they can be really great for someone who has a cognitive impairment. They can, cause they, they, they feel like and sound like a real animal. And also they've been used if there's any uh, grandparents raising grandchildren watching this, they can also help children, uh, autistic children sometimes really respond to them or other children with uh, various types of disabilities. And then we also will have door alarms, some of which uh, 
Bob demonstrated, I recently got one for my parents because uh, of an issue with wandering and that can really help. And they have a remote control. So if you're going out the door and you're the person who knows what they're doing, if any of us do, then you can turn it off so you don't have to hear it every time it, it goes on and off. But then when the person who might wander goes out, then it will uh, notify you. So we've got those three going. So please fill out that uh, survey and because we really are interested in your feedback and, and hope this has been an enjoyable program for you. I certainly learned a lot. I was very impressed by that rug as well, that illusion rug and several other items that I wasn't familiar with. Awesome, Ruth. Thank you. So um, our tech master, Rebecca Chaplin, has put the link for the survey in the chats on whatever platform you're viewing. So that survey is really important. Please fill it out. And she also put a link in there about the robotic pets. I have clients who have a, uh, both robotic kittens and robotic puppies. And particularly for people with cognitive impairments, my observation has been it's been so helpful. It's They have their own little something to take care of and love on and hold close. So it's, it's a good thing. The kitten purrs and the puppy barks and <laughs> they're, really, they're delightful. So. So if you're watching, you, you need to hear that we have something to share with you, to give you. So that's a great thing. So Ruth, thank you. And everyone who's been part of this presentation, we are just delighted. Thank you, Bob Krollman. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Rebecca, behind the scenes. Here comes our team. We're so thankful that you joined us for this second session. And we, we've enjoyed um, collaborating together to provide it to you. Thank you. There's our team. And there's Rebecca. Thank you all. So join us next week also at 1.30 on these same platforms, the Land of Sky Facebook, the YouTube for AARP at 1.30. And the topic next week is telehealth at home, which uh, most of us have been involved with at some point. And if you haven't, you're going to learn something. And if you have, you'll still learn something. So thank you all very much. And we will see you next week. Take care, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye.